Dr. Neil, welcome to the show uh, and my YouTube channel. So this is mostly um, our broadcast and uh, directed toward uh, Arabic um, speakers. And um, well, as an Egyptian uh, scientist, I found that's a, a very important point to um, to present the science, especially physics, uh, to the Arabian world, Middle East mostly. Uh, so I'm really, really happy to have you in the show. And uh, let me start with a very basic question I would like to ask always. It's what's drive you through your work? What's your main motivation in physics? How it's all started? Yeah, it's an interesting question. Uh, when I was, of course, it started when I was a child. And uh, my father was a land surveyor. So his job was to make maps and uh, use geometry to plot out land and so on. And so he taught me some of the maths and Pythagoras' theorem and so on. Mm -hmm. And he had a big hand calculator that he used to use, which was great fun. <laughs> but, uh, and then I think I had a very good teacher uh, who taught me maths when I was in primary school, uh, from Scotland actually, who sort of devoted her life to teaching maths. Um, and then I got very interested in insects Yes. Uh, insects. I like to look under stones and behind trees and uh, under bark of trees and so on. And I found insects uh, really fascinating and I could watch them for long times. And especially in Africa, this was so interesting because the variety is enormous and all, all kinds of beautiful insects. Um, so I thought I was interested in biology. And I liked mathematics, so I thought I would do mathematical biology. Um, and I went to university intending to do that. Um, but actually, yeah, what, what, so I started off doing biology. But what I realized is there are very many contingencies in biology. You know, to a large extent, everything is an accident. Oh, yeah. And uh, whereas when you do mathematics, you know, there are some logical principles, uh, typically as few as possible. And from those principles, very many conclusions follow. Uh, so I wasn't really interested in mathematics because I'm, I'm really interested in nature. I love nature. And I think nature is our best guide to the truth. And... Uh, so I, uh, I took physics um, and I think as an undergraduate began to learn about the precision of physics. And so physics is just quite incredible. You apply some areas of mathematics to nature and it just works to a totally remarkable thing. Fascinating how it comes to work by then. Yes. So yeah, you feel too fascinating when you try to solve a problem, put some mass in, and yes, voila, it works. Some 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 answer comes, and then sometimes, if you're very lucky, uh, and the mathematical description you're using is correct, uh, the answers are accurate to phenomenal precision. So I'm somehow fascinated by that uh, fact that mathematical descriptions of nature can work to such precision and accuracy. And of course, the area I work in of cosmology is one of the prime examples. You know, when I started in cosmology in 1980, nothing was known, or, or let's say one number was known to better than a factor of two. I mean, uncertainties were basically 50% in all quantities. Uh, uh, and uh, the temperature was known to better than 50%, but nothing else was known. Um, expansion rate of the universe, for example, was uncertain to a factor of two. And, um, but over the last um, 40 years, that precision has really narrowed. And so now we have mathematical descriptions of, of what's going on, not really explanations, but just descriptions like mathematical models, which fit the data to an amazing uh, degree. And that's been wonderful because it really sharpens certain paradoxes. Yeah. For example, how did the universe begin? You know, what happened? Something happened 14 billion years ago. We don't know what it is. 
But we now see the outcome. And we see the outcome of this amazing event 14 billion years ago can be modeled with mathematics, which is quite certain, with physical principles, which we understand from other contexts, like plasmas, like gravity. And so we, we, we know that we think we know the laws which govern these phenomena, and they work to an incredible degree. And so that's really sharpened the fundamental paradoxes, like what happened? Uh, why is the universe so simple? Um, and uh, yeah, sort of what's going on underneath it all. I, I understand, you know, as, as uh, I'm, I'm doing experimental particle physics, and in some of the experiments we try to design, one of right. the main goals is the uh, accuracy and precision of what we're doing, how many digits we would like to be certain of our uncertainty, to reduce yeah. the error bars to a very precise level that the theory can do, or the solution can do them work, and try yeah. to see what's the best approach to um, to describe the experimental data. That's, yeah. that, that's fascinating, also, when they look to this graphs and see how we need to give it as accurate as we could, like maybe to sometime to the 10th and 15 digit, that everything needs to be very precise. Exactly. It's also fascinating. So, yes, it's very unforgiving, uh, which I like. You know, so sometimes the general public thinks of science, and especially cosmology, that we all just dream up ideas, and we all have our own different uh, preconceptions, and and our own descriptions and you know it's like a fantasy but in reality when you bring experiments and observation these are very unforgiving and if you have a good theory and it makes real predictions uh, precise predictions you know usually it's proved wrong yeah and that's it it's finished <laughs> <laughs> i think now we have this new new results for the uh, w boson uh, mass which yeah. I, I will think we're gonna struggle with with the next maybe uh, until the next collider being built otherwise yeah. we have any, any proof yet so it's it's a it's a, a long period for the old theory to to be developed and we can see if the standard model will still stand or right. or we're gonna need something else <laughs>